All right, yes. Welcome to uh, Computer Aided Technology, the webinar, um, Manufacturing Solutions. is presenting this uh, an installment on Advanced FDM Mode in GrabCAD Print, which is a small feature that most people probably haven't found because it's tucked away in several other menus. So we're going to get this webinar started first with an agenda. We're going to meet the Stratasys team. Then we're going to dive into some GrabCAD, the just a basic introduction if you haven't seen it before, a little overview, and then how to set up advanced features in GrabCAD. Then we'll move into the advanced FDM mode and walk through some different parts, and I'll show you some errors. I'll show you some uh, you know common mistakes and things to help guide you through there. It's a new um, what's called plugin, so you know some things to keep in mind. It doesn't do everything yet. So you have to make sure you read the release notes and know what it can do and what it will do in the future releases. Then we'll end with some tips and tricks that I've uh, found as I've been around this new uh, add-in. So let's get started. So this is FDM portfolio. As you, most of you may know, oops, double click, that the, okay, the FDM process is a plastic filament it's on a spool that gets pulled up to the head of a printer and extruded out a different layer height. So hopefully most of you already have FDM um, printers in-house. Hopefully you have the Stratasys style printers because this webinar is specifically for GrabCAD print advanced features which are only usable on the big box printers here on the right. So we'll be using for our demo purposes the F370. All the templates will be set up with involving around the F370. And then just note the advanced features that I'm about to show you is usable on the F370, 380, 450, and the 900. So if you're further down on this side of the column, uh, GrabCAD print advanced features sadly doesn't work for these printers yet. Uh, it might come in future installments, but we don't have a timeline for that. Going over. Uh, we've had some new uh, material releases, well, material, singular, uh, TPU 9280, or 92A, and this is uh, adding into the F123 um, portfolio. So now you get five material choices with your 370 as opposed to the four that you probably originally bought it with. So there is an upgrade kit a different material, but we wanted to throw this in here because using this new elastomer, uh, this will kind of unlock a lot of new kind of capabilities, especially with the advanced features I'm about to show you with self-supporting or self-supporting hole and uh, thread inserts and just thickening things up. So this elastomer being a top of the line material by itself added with the pow powerful slicing capabilities of what is FDM advanced mode will really make your tool very powerful and allow you to do a lot cooler things in the near future. So let's dive right into GrabCAD Print. So hopefully all of you have already been here. GrabCADprint.com backslash print. And all you have to do is go up to the top right corner and sign up for free, send you an email, you confirm it, then there's a download link, and now you have access to a you know an awesome GrabCAD environment. So let me bring that up for you real quick. So your GrabCAD environment, most of you should already you know downloaded or using it on your F series. This one is, like I said, set up for our 370. Allows you this nice user interface. You can add models over here. We'll be adding some later on. We have our check models, slice heights, um, view, how we're uh, viewing the model, and then we have our model information from units, how we're setting it up, and these all these features here are in the standard grab print. You don't have to do anything anything other than install the software to get access to all of these. And one of my favorites is this Orient Face Plane. So you're able to just select a uh, plane and it automatically orients. So let me just grab some real quick. I don't know. Oops, sorry. You're able to just grab this, say that's the bottom, and now it orients. So really love this feature. So if you're not using it already, when you're especially dealing with STLs and other um, models that don't have ori the uh, origins uh, set right. This really helps out really 
clean and easy. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, because I kind of went fast. Uh, let's confirm. Oops. I know. Delete. When I went to add models, you'll notice over here in the column, these are all SolidWorks parts. And the only STL file in here is this one up here, but I'm able to go and just grab uh, a SolidWorks file and drop it straight into the uh, platform. So this is one of the new features that is in the used to be just in the advanced FDM mode, but now is in all of GrabCAD. So you can drop a SolidWorks file straight into your GrabCAD, and it already knows your units and it locks your units too, so you can't mess up the CAD model. So this will help, uh, if especially on larger industry partners, when you have designers, CAD, uh, CADmen, and then techs that are in the printer. This will help um, make it so that when you're mixing units, you you don't mix up your print units. So when you ship a STL, STL file, you can choose, you know, uh, let's do that real quick. You can choose a lot, lot of different, from millimeters to centimeters to inches to feet. So here, if your notes aren't well put, you don't know which one of these uh, units is correct, and you just kind of have to leave it up to the tech to guess or waste time coming after you. But if you have it straight in the CAD file, you're able to jump right in. So, having that been said, let's jump right back into Advanced FDM. So, this was the, the landing page that we just saw earlier. If you're kind of following along, I'll take this a little slower. We're going to go up to the file, and then you're going to select your uh, Preferences tab. In your Preferences tab, you're going to go down to your FDM tab down here. Like I said, it's kind of hidden. Then in your FDM tab, you're going to click this little Enable Advanced FDM. And once this is done, if you click off anywhere around here, it's going to cancel it. So you have to click Save. And once you click it, the little check boxes go in, and now you'll have this magic box up the top uh, left-hand corner. And this little square with a diamond in it and uh, extra lines on top, that is your new FDM mode advanced. So that's where we're going to spend the majority of our time. So let me just do a quick little intro to this. So this is our nice new advanced modes. So now you can go in here and we're going to grab, uh, let's say this, uh, M-Bucks to start. So now I just grabbed a parasolid and I'm going to go click on my orientation because that's my favorite tool. And now it's set up. So you have your same, uh, what's called, print styles just in, in your uh, print tab over here. You can do your, uh, what's called, your support style, which SMART is usually the best. It's save material and reduce time. That's what SMART stands for in this case. Sparse, basic, surround, box. Boxes were like if you're doing rocket ships or something really tall windmills, you want to do a box or a surround. That will encase the part in a support material and really protect it so it doesn't uh, teeter, especially when you're on the 900s and it's a very narrow, like say, one inch base and it's a 14, 16 inch tall part. Um, we've also used box for, I'll say, very fragile parts that we're shipping to different offices and then we'll leave the parts encased in the box of support ship it so if it gets banged around, especially in the holiday season with our mail, it'll arrive on site, then they can dissolve the support mail material away and have that nice fragile part without any need for uh, extra packaging. So depending on what you're making, consider box as a, I'll say, necessary for shipping. And then here's our new materials. Uh, support is always locked to your uh, material choice. Then for all these heights, I'm going to go on the highest slice height, the 13th hour just to speed up the uh, calculations and slices that we'll be doing later. So we've done our orientation, we're going to finish that. This is where things get fun. So now we have a new body selection, and over here we have sliders. This will allow us to increase and decrease the fill, and you'll note down at the bottom over here, we have the number of cubic inches and the number of grams that we're going to be infilling this with the strength meter. We have the rigidity, which is the number of shells on the outside. So, as you can see, I can increase the number of shells and decrease it. 
Then we even have an advanced tab. Now we can go into our infills, our double dents. We can choose hexagram, we can choose solid, or we can just drag these and create our own special infills and angles of infill. So it's giving you a lot more um, abilities to kind of choose. Then up here, this is kind of fun. So under your selection, you have body that that affects the entire body in this model. Of course, I made this box as a single body, so we only have one body to select with. I'll show you a multi-body piece in a couple minutes. But if we go to face, now we have some interesting uh, abilities as well. So you can see that's grayed out currently until we select it. We have inserts, we have self-supporting, we have avoid seams, and then one of my favorite, or I'll say minor features in here, is that these little fly-up windows actually kind of explains to you what everything does. So this is something, I'll say, relatively new, and they've even add, added in some graphics to it that makes self-supporting. It has a little diamond in there that so we're going to grab. That's a bad hole. So this hole, and then I probably clicked a little too fast, but this is um, one of my troubleshooting examples. So this is a, a face that's split into two. When you notice this, you've saved it out as, um, this one's a parasolid, so it's saving out two ind individual faces, and it won't let you make a self-supporting uh, hole. And this is uh, something we'll touch in the tips and tricks a little later. So let's jump back into the presentation right now. Presentation. So I touched on a little bit of the interface and what we're going to do. So here's one of the parts stopped halfway of a part that we will edit in a little bit. Note before, in the standard GrabCAD, we had a choice of solids, sparse, doubles, double dense, and then in the most recent couple updates, maybe one or two updates ago, we got hexagonal. So we actually have a fourth one now. Um, and then in the past, we have GrabCAD, and by past, I mean the last month or two, we have had GrabCAD, and then we've, for the advanced users who have like the 380s and above, and even the 370s, you have something called Insight. So Insight is the it's a powerhouse. I like to call it the advanced, advanced mode. Like it's way too much control for the most, like, most users. Same time, there's a lot of features in here that just aren't, you know, aren't uh, that advanced that would satisfy a lot of needs from this uh, ease of use side. So that's where advanced FDM mode kind of fills in. So here's a chart that I split in half for you to see. So grab CAD versus Insight. We have all the abilities here on the right column to do inside of GrabCAD. But then on this left column, for the models and features and advanced applications, you can see that this column right here on the far right is the Insight column. Insight can do it all. But I put in here this, these green arrows. The dark green, we can do it just as well as Insight. The light green arrows, these are things that we have a couple of abilities, but it's not as fully developed feature that you can find in Insight. So, with the support editing, we can do a self-supporting hole with a couple of clicks. If the hole is actually in the CAD and it's a perfect circle, we can do that. It's very limiting, but we can do it in certain cases. While in Insight, you have much broader control and actually draw stuff in. Um, the other one is adding multiple contours. I just kind of teased a little bit at that when I was showing you some of the uh, parts, when did a quick overview. Then we have the optimized scene location. This is much more flushed out in the insight, but there is that checkbox that uh, allows you to avoid those seam lines. So that is also in the advanced mode. Then we have the editing part. Oh, I lost my, uh, no, my mouse, there it is. There we go. Uh, the edit part features, we can edit holes, make them wider and smaller to drop insets into, which kind of goes right along with this one. So we're able to, really edit some of those features there and do infills. Granted, this one is, I'll say, about two-thirds of the way developed. There's still a lot more capability in Insight, but this one still kind of really holds true. Then, yeah, we with these new abilities, we can go hexagonal and a couple light um, infills so that we can pull vacuums through our parts, just like we can uh, do with our Insight brethren. But they're still, like, swapping material, 
types and uh, sand casting, investment casting, where you wash out your uh, model, where you swap the model and support material builds. Um, those features still aren't unlocked in advanced mode. They're somewhere down the pipeline in development, but so we're going to stick to the ones that are pretty much dark green. So we'll be going over our custom infills, adding multiple contours, and our editing parts and embedded things to, for the most part. I'll just touch on the, you know, click boxes, the check boxes, which won't, it's not that exciting, but you'll see what it does. So what you saw earlier was when I selected a face, you're able to select it on the part, and then you're able to assign a thickness to it. This allows you to then increase the thickness of that contour around that face. Which now, if you remember, on the old styles or any open source printers that you may have used, you can always choose the number of shells. Stratasys has always kept that kind of on lockdown, but now we're able to choose a face and add was this, about 15 contour lines too. And then the rest of the body still only has two. So if this is a critical feature, we can strengthen that area without having to drive up our material costs for the rest of the part. So that is one of the uh, big reasons why we do this. So this is the picture from earlier. So here's a little bit more description. We went solid fill and increased the strength on these three parts over down here, here, and here. We also have a little bit over here, but this is a type of heat insert too. Um, this is our sparse fill over here, but then along through the majority of this part, it's still at our double dense. So we're able to lighten the part over here, maybe give it a little bit more flex. We're able to go solid with a custom insert so that when we melt that insert in, it grabs onto the plastic and nests in there just right so it has the proper strength just like you would normally. And then note this was done on the F370 of a gray ASA. Gray ASA in a single part, no bonding necessary. All of this just goes in and it comes out just like this. So now, note that I mentioned with the little half circle incident, here are some of the version compatibilities off of the chart. It's on GrabCAD under help, but I thought I would mention it. So if you're using Inventor, Katia, SolidWorks, this is where you can go up to 2018, and then uh, there's a couple of support tickets out right now for those who have upgraded to 2019. That would be me. Um, once you upgrade to 2019, the uh, what's it called the file format changes in SolidWorks. So beware, be warned of that. That if you haven't upgraded to 2019 yet, and you're going to be heavily using this, hold off. For a little bit, it's, un, it's in works, and they're trying to bring it online, but it's not quite there yet. So you'll see uh, when I bring up some of my uh, 2018 and 2019 files, because I've upgraded it, the way it saves has even affected my 2018 installation of the of the solid, of SolidWorks. So definitely hold off on installing on your uh, SolidWorks 2019 if you can. Uh, otherwise, the rest of these. Uh, Solid Edge, let's see, Doo -doo -doo. let's go to the next page, here we go. So then, yeah, STL is supported in all versions of just GrabCAD, but it is not supported in advanced features, or in an advanced FDM. So note, if you have a library of STL files that you just pull from to print, you're going to need to start pulling that CAD data or linking it somehow. Um, I just, we have a couple samples of, I have some steps that I brought in, and then I have, where is it? I also have some Parasolid XB style that I have also saved into my file format that will be pulled up. So then you can see kind of the differences. Um, the Parasolid here is the one that it doesn't define the whole completely. So you lose some functionality with the uh, Parasolids we found. And there's a support ticket with GrabCAD, and they're looking into that currently. So that's just as of today with um, the last couple of correspondence with GrabCAD support. As I've been building this presentation, this one has about 90% uh, capability. Step is pretty much step and uh, I just are full functionality. And 2018 and before is fully supported. It's the 2019 and the people who are dual running 2019 and 2018 that we'll have some compatibility issues. Um, wasn't able to check in on Inventor or the other 
style of, uh, or the other, like Creo and that. Granted, I was at a customer facility last week, and we were running the uh, Katia, I believe, 2017. So as you can see, it's valid up to 2017, and it works fine right on the customer site. So they can drop their Katia V5 straight into their GrabCAD, and they loved it. So um, yeah, outside of that, don't know about Solid Edge, Siemens, and PC. So those, hopefully what's written is correct if you're going to use it. But otherwise, we'll move on to that. Yeah, so we're going to go on to some tips and tricks now. So with advanced FDM mode, we have to realize where it comes on our process. So even before you go into advanced FDM mode, this should be the designer side. You're building your part. Once your part's built and you have an idea about it, then you're going to want to push it into advanced FDM mode, and then from there you can save it out, and then you run into a GrabCAD. You drop into GrabCAD print, and then you throw it into your queue for your printer. This is a sample, simple workflow. All right, great, but this isn't how production or customer sites normally run. You're, you're usually cramming as many prints as you possibly can onto a tray. So if you're trying to do it this way, <clears throat> a circular motion between these two things would get kind of, I'll say, confusing and maddening. So what we recommend is go drop into your advanced FDM mode, create your CMB files, and then import all three of them into your GrabCAD print and arrange the tray at a time. So this is more of a, you're going to spend more time in advanced FDM mode building out your CMBs creating that pile, and then loading into your GrabCAD print, creating your trays for your workflow, and then hitting print. This is a uh, little bit different than probably what you're used to because we're adding in this extra step. So now we're going to dive a little bit more into our like reduced time. So by that, I mean this. So this is that self-supporting angle of what that other file is going to do. So note, when you change this, it's a easy click when you have a perfect uh, cylinder detected. So here, this is why it's time saving because now instead of having all this support material that needs to build up and support that top side, it is now self-supported with the angles, which it's a square, so it's not the prettiest, but if you're screwing into it or mounting or any of those things with actual bolts or real hardware, um, they will you know, kind of give way. This is still plastic we're dealing with, especially on the F-Series. Uh, you know, ASA, ABS, the PC ABS may get a little tough to go into, and especially the, well, if you go into the TPUs, that's rubber-like, so that will just kind of stretch around your bolt. So this will save your time in the tank and removing that support material, and you can just punch bolt or bolts into it with an ease. So let's move on. So now here are some of the screenshots I was taking earlier. So when you select a face, here's what it would be normally, and then when you increase the density and increase the thickness, it starts putting down extra material. So let's go right in and let's just start a new one. Let's throw in, let's grab our solid file, 2018, and drop it into here. So here's our part. And now we can choose our face. And now, see, now I have a full cylinder to select. Now I can choose to drop in an insert. I can make self-supporting. So we'll make self-supporting. We'll hit update. So one of the other things, when you click a check mark here, a little box up here oh, disappeared. Uh, will appear right here and it says update. You want to click the update. And then otherwise, it's going to kind of lock you out from doing other things later on with the slice previews and whatnot. So, um, then here's that seam avoidance. So now we're going to let's change that seam and this seam to be avoid. And then we're going to change this one. We're going to do a drop and insert into it. So I believe I did a short 10. And now we're going to hit update. So note how the uh, shape changed. So when you drop an insert, let me click on that again. Into one of these cylinders, 
you are actually going to be changing the diameter of that hole by these dimensions down here. So if you pay close attention, the like if you just click it and drop it, you may actually over like just not see it. So it's something to be aware of. So when you change this hole, the A is the actual diameter that's going to be the new diameter. That's going to give you just enough to kind of cram the, uh, the heated insert tip in, and then when it heats, it's going to melt it out, and this B is the crumple zone. That's the area that's going to get pushed, melt out, and get pushed into your parts. So you can note here that this is uh, 0.16, yeah, 0.16 of an inch, and 0.27, almost just over a quarter inch of a crumple, or quarter inch on the on an inner diameter, and the crumple zone is a six, or 0.16 inch. So what that means, so, the door is just too big. So, uh, can I do it? All right, so I'm purposely kind of trying to stress it out to see if it's gonna throw an error on us, but it might, might, might not. So yeah, if you leave this floating up here and don't update it, depending on your RAM and other stuff, you may cause some issues when you go to slice back and forth. So I'm going to purposely kind of you know, ride this kind of hard to see if we can cause a couple of these things so that I can show you how to troubleshoot it, but maybe it'll behave itself and we won't see that. So time will tell. Uh, but what we're going to about to see is on this, area, we're going to have a bunch of support underneath the, the rim here. This surface and this surface will have little yellow touch-offs in different areas from the uh, where the tip is to avoid the seams. And then down here, we're going to see a buildup of solid crumple zone around the insert area that we place down here. Then this self-supporting square is just going to be a square. Um, Trying to remember, we might see with the self-supporting, they do beef up the uh, outside of that as well. And actually, 100% true, sweet. Let this generate our graphics, and then we'll dive into what we're seeing. So, there we go. Going in. There. So as I bring this down, here's what I was talking about. So this yellow right here, which is just a straight line down, this is your seam. So when you hit avoid seams, it's going to put that seam over here, over here, then there was one somewhere down at the bottom of the screen that you can't really see. Uh, so the seams, when you hit avoid seams, it's going to hide it. So if you ever looked at a FDM part and you notice that there's just a line somewhere, that's where the tip picks up and puts it down every time. When you hide it, it increases the travel time a little bit, so you slow down your print speed a little bit, but now you hide those touch-offs so that it's kind of uniformly um, dimpled across the surface. Now, let me zoom in further for you guys to see. So use your extra um, contour so that when you heat in, it's going to melt. And then you're going to note that you have a double dense uh, crumple zone that's going to melt and expand into. So this is how your uh, inserts will go into the parts. Now, that's actually funny. We could flip the touch off, even though I didn't put the void seams here. For some reason, it decided to put them off to the side. I want to zoom out to see. Hopefully not the best angle to do it. So we're going to exit this. Now we're going to update. And then, no, we went right back. So, now, we want to start a new FDM. No. Oh. I was supposed to save that. One second. Just to show you how to upload them later on. So, we're just going to quickly grab this client insert. Go to 10. And go to this one. Is that the same so that we can see the two? And then this self support. So now we have this file done. We're going to save this project. We're going to do this one, this one, and it's going to be saved. 
and then we're going to export out our CMB. So this is the actual print file that we will be importing into the GrabCAD later on with multiple parts. Uh, oops, I forgot to slice. So now while that's slicing, won't bore you again with that, we'll jump back into going into a little bit more of the stuff we've done. So what we're going to be looking for later on when this fully slices, you'll note that when, if I reinforce this area here, it will then change this area here. But if I drop a insert into it that's certain depth, so a long versus a short insert, note how on layer 60, the contours start appearing for that crumple zone for an insert. And then further up, the contour is actually fully fill in at layer 120 versus here's the regular, here's the let's call it reinforced version, then we're going to move on to 180. The crumple zone is kind of all but, kind of, or the reinforcement of the one face is all but disappeared, but the crumple zone is still here for the insert. And then on the same part, note that I have a self-supporting hole over here, and then a supported hole, a non-self-supporting hole here. And you can see just the difference between the amount of support there that you're going to have to break away later. And then when that completes this kind of drop-in, you'll have this much support for the non-supported, and then the fully supported. Well, did I accidentally hit something? My apologies. Where'd you go? There you go. So up here, you'll see that when you do self-supporting, it does build in uh, a solid backing or a double dent backing with extra contours so that if you do decide to drill into that hole, there is extra plastic there for it to grab onto. So you can drill out these self-supporting holes with ease without uh, risking the integrity of the part. So it depends on, you know, if you're faster with grabbing the drill press and popping out two holes, then, you know, throwing this in a tank and trying to break away the support. It's all up to the users on that part. So now that this is done, now we can send. So once this is done, we will now have manufacturing notes. So it will give you this kind of list that says, all right, it dropped in a heated insert, dropped in a self-supporting hole on here, and then you can either send to print, which will then just send it straight over here to the print side, and then we can hit print. But that only allows us to do one print at a time. What we're going to attempt to do is do two. Um, so I'm going to go down and hit export. So over here, we're going to do two. Test one, path does not exist. Hmm. That's it. Okay. I'm just going to hit send to print, I guess. For some reason, it's a, that's a Windows Explorer error where not letting me save the file. It keeps asking me to open up new file folders. So I have to double check. That's new. Um, but as you see, once you hit that send to print, it will then jump straight into your GrabCAD print. It will be kind of, uh, I'll say clunky looking, to say the least. Um, that's because it's going straight from the build file. And you'll notice this icon over here, it's locked. So being able, you can move it around, but you won't be able to do any, like, real editing like you normally would over here. Everything is pretty much locked out except for the uh, purge tower. That's the only thing you can really affect on the other side. So, from there, let me go back into... How about that? Now I want to go into a box. Let's go... We're going to drop this on the bottom. Now, this is one of those boxes that I had created earlier, but we had a little trouble with. So hopefully I chose the... Yep. So this is a different one. So this was one 
type of the par salad where if it's a UB or an X underscore B, it saves it a different way than it's the X underscore T. So that's the difference big here. So one of them, uh, I would have to double check, I think it's the T, allows you to select these holes and say make self-supporting, while the other version doesn't let you, or uh, doesn't allow you to do that. It breaks the surfaces into two, so now you have an issue with dropping this one feature. And you can still do the drop and inserts and other such things and uh, thickening the faces. So like over here, which face do we want to thicken? No, we're going to be editing that one. So we're just going to take this one and we're going to increase this face over here. And I'm going to say avoid the uh, seams. And this one, we can drop in and insert. How about helicoil? Let's go quarter inch. Now, you can see that the interior is a quarter inch, but then the exterior crumple zone is an additional quarter inch on top of that. So let's update and look at that. There's an error. Why is there an error? So that is because, take a wild guess, that this distance from here to here, oops, from here to here, is actually less than the distance needed to insert this hole, which is B here. So over here, if I remember my CAD right, should be 0.2 inches, not 0.2, 0.2. So that's why you're going to have an error. You can also tell that it only aired out on item number three. So if we go down over here, say drop in a 10 and update, now it works because we're underneath that 0.2 distance between the bottom here and the up here because you need that crumple zone in order for this to work. Say you have this design, you kind of need the heated inserts, but you don't need the full strength. You really just want to drop in a couple and, you know, make it a little bit better for yourself. So how do you do that? That's where if you select a new face and you say add an insert, you can go over to the third column over here. This is a custom insert. This allows you to actually create your own inserts. So I'm going to go to millimeter. My inner diameter should be 0.5. And then let's go, let's make my crumple zone something really small. So we're going to do 0.1 millimeter. Now, when we hit update, it updated. Perfect. So that is, you know, a quick example of how you can drop in your own custom uh, parts into your uh, file, especially if you're dealing with any custom inserts. You're insert company or if you need to, you know, make your own uh, thing. Now, um, from there, yeah, you just hit send to print. Uh, don't say it. So you always have the choice of saving or not saving. And then you hit it into the print. And we should see it come out nice. One second, and then we'll wrap this up. We are at the end of our time here, so I wanted to take the last five minutes and go ask any questions or anything I didn't go over as well as you would have liked. Let me know now. Um, so I just saw a thing pop up from Eric saying, uh, up here, dialogue disappeared real quick, but the Insight thing, yes, Insight was developed originally with the Dimension series and the original Fortises and V1s. Uh, Insight uh, development has slowed, not completely to a halt, but has slowed dramatically, and most of the efforts have been placed into GrabCAD. And if you look on my screen over here, you'll note that they've actually built Insight into GrabCAD as well. So you can launch it within GrabCAD and then send them back and forth. So Insight is being, and all of the tech inside of Insight is being absorbed into GrabCAD. Um, the exact timeline for that, don't exactly know. Um, but as you can see with the checklist on my presentation, they are, was it this is version, so they've knocked out all of these uh, new features into the new FBM mode. So a couple, give another year or two, 
another couple updates and you'll see a lot of the features from Insight now be fully integrated into GrabCAD with the new interface. And it looks a lot nicer than, I bet you can barely see these lines that versus, you know. It, GrabCAD has its moments where it doesn't look as pretty, but it's still prettier than Insight is. When was GrabCAD, init when was GrabCAD initially released? Uh, I can probably answer that one for you, Keith. Perfect, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I so it was, uh, they started alpha testing back in 2014, I believe. Uh, we had a few of the resellers that were kind of on that initial group, uh, and it, it has definitely come a long ways. Um, as far as the public release, it's probably been out for about a year, year and a half. Mm. Um, but we need to start wrapping it up. Um, we do have a, another webinar that's using the WebEx platform here in a few minutes. I do have a couple questions here on the side, Keith, and we'll, we'll yep. send those out afterwards as a follow-up email. Uh, unfortunately, we have run out of time because of our technical issues to begin with. Yeah, no so uh, I am recording. We have your question, and we will answer that. Yeah, we have your questions. We will answer them. Uh, we are recording it, and then uh, we should see this up on our YouTube channel within a few days. Mm -hmm. So um, anything else you need to cover, Keith? No, that was – I think I just missed the thank you slide. But that was it. Thank you. All right. So everybody have a good day. Nice Anything else you need to cover, Keith? No, that was, I think I just missed the thank you slide, but that was it. Thank you. All right. So everybody have a good day.